Hey y'all, how about today I show you how to make yummy, delicious, fudgy, plant-based, whole food, oil-free brownies that are made with just normal ingredients, like just a handful of them. Ingredients that you already have on hand, I promise you, even if you're not plant-based. Let's begin. Hey y'all, how about today? You want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and then you're going to mix your wet ingredients and your dry ingredients or your wet is going to go over here and your dry over here but whatever um you're going to take a three quarters of a cup of flour this is just a white whole wheat you could use really any kind of flour um well no not any kind of flour because some flowers are more moist than others so like a whole wheat or a um, like a spelt flour or a thing coconut a coconut flour would be okay I think that's just a white whole wheat. Um, this is your unsweetened cocoa powder. It is um, three quarters of a cup, so three quarters of a cup of flour, three quarters of a cup of cocoa. Um, one cup of sugar. This is pure cane sugar. You could use um, like a coconut sugar. I don't know why I'm on coconut today. Anyways, pure cane sugar. Um, this is salt, quarter teaspoon of salt, and this is a tablespoon of baking soda. Ah, oh, I forgot milk. <laughs> so you're just gonna whisk this up. You wanna mix this really good. Maybe I should've gotten a bigger bowl. There we go. Half a cup of milk. I prefer soy, because it's more neutral. So to this, you're going to add um, one cup of your unsweetened applesauce. Sorry, I need my spoon that's in my peanut butter. So one cup of unsweetened applesauce. It's gonna seem like a lot. It's gonna seem like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be massive. But it actually makes a 13 by nine pan, which is unique for brownies because normally they, they're made like in a smaller pan. Um, two cups of peanut butter. Now you could totally use a cashew butter, an almond butter, um, if you have some allergies or whatever, but it's two cups of a nut or seed butter. Again, it's gonna seem like a lot, it's worth it. Half a cup of milk. Plant milk, of course. And then a tablespoon of vanilla extract. We're gonna give this a mix. Now it makes a lot. I know I said that, but I don't want you to freak out when you think, oh my gosh, that's too much and cut back on something. You know, baking is not a little of this and a little of that. There's a reason behind the measurements. And obviously you want your nut or seed butter to be um, soft. It makes it easier. So if you have some that's kept in the fridge, let it sit out. Okay, so there you have it, it's pretty smooth. And then now, you're gonna add your dry to your wet, just like how we normally cook. Mix that in without making a mess. That's mixed pretty good. So now, you're gonna take, I'm sorry, I didn't know I was doing this. A 13 by nine baking pan. 
You're gonna line it with um, some wax paper, parchment paper. And then you're going to dump this out. I'm gonna show you all the trick. It's not like a dough that's gonna naturally want to spread out in the pan. So, you're gonna take some more wax paper, parchment paper, and you're gonna put it on top, and you're gonna use that to smooth it out. So you're gonna use that to push it to all the corners, get it even. Now you could use a silicone baking mat, I mean baking um, pan if you have one. But I'm just using glass, so you have to use wax paper on the bottom. We don't use any oils. So this is actually kind of a cool way because you can kind of feel if it's thicker in one area or thinner in another, kind of manipulate it around. Okay, walk away. You're gonna take uh, vegan chocolate chips. We use the Enjoy Life brand because there's no oil in it or anything. I prefer the mini chocolate chips, but that's literally all the mini chocolate chips I own right now. And so I'm gonna do a mix of like the regular size and the mini. Um, and you're just gonna sprinkle this all over the top. Now you don't have to do this part. You can omit it, but why? It's amazing. your wax paper, kind of lightly push them in, not sink them, you know, lightly. Now the trick to brownies, kind of like when we make cookies, you kind of want to slightly under bake them. So they're going to bake for 14 minutes and you're going to want to bake them longer. That's like your brain's going to tell you they're not done, they got to bake longer. No, 14 minutes and then let them sit in the pan. I mean, the longer they sit, like up to eight hours, the fudgier they'll be. Now, if you don't like a fudgy brownie, which is strange because they're the best, if you like a more cakey brownie, you can bake it a little bit longer and they'll come out more cakey. Um, so I'm gonna bake these for 14 minutes and see y'all soon. So after 14 minutes, this is what you have. And um, they kind of jiggle a little, if you can see that. And you're gonna think, I, I need to bake them longer. Do not do that, resist the urge, because as they cool and as they sit here, they're gonna get fudgy and kind of firm up. Again, it takes about eight hours for the optimum fudginess level. <laughs> um, and so the longer you let them sit, the fudgier they're gonna be, and that's what we like. Um, again, if you like a cake or brownie, totally bake them a few minutes longer, and still let them sit, and they'll come out a little cakier. I like fudginess, and so as it, it cools, it's gonna kind of settle, get fudgy, and just yummy and delicious. And that's it, y'all. It's crazy easy. It's ingredients you already have on hand. Everybody has flour, applesauce, peanut butter, and sugar. Um, that's it, it's amazing. So thank you so much for watching. Um, be sure to subscribe. Hopefully Steve puts a little subscribe thing up there. Subscribe, like, share, and try the recipes, and be blessed, y'all. Thanks.